Anyway, we got a lot to talk about in the stock market, which was roaring this week after the 50 basis point cut by Jay Powell and the Federal Reserve. We're bringing in David Bonson Group's CEO. He's the founder and managing partner, author of the DividendCafe.com, and his latest book is Full Time Work and the Meaning of Life. And my pal Jim LeCamp, Senior Vice President for Investments at Morgan Stanley. All right, gentlemen, this could be fun. Let's see. The Dow is up 670 points. The NASDAQ, 264. The S&P 500 up 77 points, so it was a big week. Interestingly, after the 50 basis point cut, interest rates in the Treasury market went up uh, a little bit, 8 to 10 basis points. Anyway, David Bonson, what do you make of this story? Did the Fed do the right thing, and what's the stock market impact? Well, I think that the stock market has been pricing in the expectation of it for quite some time. And that's why a lot of this is so different than past rate cutting cycles. For one thing, we're not in recession. You know, it's true that about half the time the Fed begins cutting rates, markets are not up a year later. Hmm. And the reason is a lot of times when the Fed is cutting rates, there's real bad economic stuff going on. There's a mixed bag right now in the economy. I think everybody knows that. But here's the real story to me, Larry, and I'm just mystified when no one's talking about it. They are quantitative tightening while they're cutting rates. Mm-hmm. It's the only time since the financial crisis that they introduced the second policy tool, a bond buy, the only time that the two policy tools in their toolbox are working against each other. I don't believe that can last. Yeah, it's and an- it just doesn't make any sense. An interesting point. Believe it or not, I read that in your Dividend Cafe. (laughs) I I do my best. (laughs) I do my best. But that's an interesting point. In other words, to our listeners, in effect, the Fed is selling bonds out of their portfolio. That's their balance sheet, which continues to come down, which I personally think is a good thing. But it does contradict, as David Bonson said, the fact that they're trying to ease up on the interest rates. So, Jim LeCamp, why don't you react to that? Did did the Fed do the right thing, number one? And number two, what about David's point that you have uh, contradictory policy levers going on? It's really an interesting time, and I I, I think David makes a very good point. During the Trump years, spending as a share of GDP was only around 20 percent. In recent years with Biden-Harris, it's up to 24 to 25 percent. And I think, you know, Dave Bond said, I don't want to have to defend every policy. In some sense, I'm responsible for some of the old policies, but they may trim a lot of fat from the government. You know, Larry, I don't mean to take the other side of it because I think you're right about some of the instincts. And a lot of it is going to come down to personnel. Mm -hmm. If Trump is reelected, you know, I got to see who some of the people are he's going to bring back because personnel is policy. Right. But look, we can talk about Elon Musk. He's taking some fat out of government. We can talk about infrastructure. We're getting rid of the badly named Inflation Reduction Act. There's a lot of things going on. But if they don't involve a discussion of entitlements, mm. then they're not doing anything. Mm. Because that is the real cause of government spending is transfer payments. The additional 3.5% of spending of GDP in the last four years has all come in transfer payments, every bit of it. Yeah, no, that's correct. No, no, that's... Those are the so-called smaller entitlements, but you're quite right. And, well, look, we'll see. You're also right. I think the bond. I think the bond market here is a very important part of this whole discussion. Whether it's Trump, whether it's Vice President Harris, whether you know the Fed is doing the right thing or not, you got a ten year at three point seven percent. That's the issue. Is that if people think inflation is going to be two, two and a half, one and a half, it doesn't matter. They're predicting real GDP growth with a one in front of it. That's what we had in the Obama years post-financial crisis. You cannot keep this country going Mm. the way we believe in aspiration, prosperity, growth, opportunity with one and a half percent real GDP growth. Mm. And the bond market is telling you we're going back to that very low real GDP. It's not good. What do you think? What do you think, Jim McCamp? Yeah, these government spending programs, they're not 
creating jobs. They're not creating even clean air. They're not lowering inflation. Yeah, you have great names like the Inflation Reduction Act, but none of them achieve their stated goals. You know, Dave Bonson, you know, your point. Jobs is exporting LNG. You know, that's the thing that kills me is that the stuff they're doing isn't creating jobs, and the stuff that was creating jobs, they stopped doing. Mm. Keystone, mm. export LNG. You know, this is the thing that your ex former boss, Larry, doesn't get enough credit for. And you know, I'm critical at certain things, but I'm telling you, energy policy is his most underrated achievement in those four years. Mm. Yes. And I can't believe that the Biden administration is not taking more criticism. I saw the Chevron CEO this week just hammering them about this delay in approval on export LNG. It's just crazy what it is doing for lost opportunity and job growth. Who was that? And, uh, and, that was uh, Mike Worth? Yes. Yeah, Worth. he's a very smart guy. I know him well. And, and energy prices are turning up, and they're going to have a bigger problem with inflation than they think if they continue with these energy policies. I just wanted to sneak in to Dave Bonson's point on the longer-term growth outlook. I'm looking at my sheets, David. The 10-year real yield on the tips is 1.59%. And that's a proxy for, you could say, capital formation or investment, but it's a proxy for the GDP. And it's a 1.59. You know who talks about that a lot is Art Laffer. He follows that very closely. If you go back into, I mean, the tips started in 1997. But if you go back and look at the history of those things, they, you know, they can get to 3% plus and have been at 3% plus, but not for many years. Not for many years. And at 1.59%, you're right. The bond market is predicting very slow growth. And the bond market is predicting very low inflation, and 10-year tips break-evens are 2.15%. So that's a rather unimpressive economy. So I agree with that point. And I also agree with the energy point, 100%. Kamala Harris will shut down the spigots for, for fossil fuels, and or Trump will open the spigots up. So you got to think, I don't know what the right bet is. Right now, Dave Bonson... Only the drillers. You play the drillers if Trump wins. Wow. And you play the lead you know companies the if Carmelo wins. You, you know what the worst performing sector was when President Trump was in office was energy. And you know what the best performing sector has been under Biden Harris? It's energy. Yeah. And, but that means something different than people think. Because prices were high. Prices were low. The COVID thing, the starting point where Biden came in, all that matters. But if Harris is elected and they don't approve any new drilling, that kills small cap drillers. If President Trump comes in, you get small cap, you get entrepreneurs, you get wildcatters, you get development. Handily, we're big old holders of Chevron and Exxon. I don't think Chevron and Exxon hurt from a Harris at all mm. because it did a uh, crowd got MP. competition. Yep. ENP, if she wins, drillers, if he wins. Those are the so, plays. All right. Let's take a break. This is great stuff, both of you. Dave Bonson of the Bonson Group. Full-Time Work and the Meaning of Life is his book. It's a very important book on how important work is. By the way, Dave, on, you know, I interviewed my very dear friend, Wilbur Ross, who has a new book out, and it kind of plots, charts his career. And, you know, he's done fabulously well. He's a multi-billionaire and became Commerce Secretary, et cetera, et cetera. So in the interview, I said, what advice would you give to people who want to be successful in life and in business. You know what he said? His first word, work hard. First thing he said, work hard. What do you think of that? Well, I love it. And he modeled it throughout his career. And you know what else he did besides work hard? He worked way into life. You know, he didn't yeah. stop working at 53. He had a billion dollars in his 50s. He kept working in his 60s and 70s. Jeez, I love it. I know somebody else is still working late in life, but I'm not going to mention any names. But I will say we have to take a commercial break. Now, back to the Larry Gudlow Show. Talking stocks with Dave Bonson of the Bonson Group. His book is Full-Time Work and the Meaning of Life. Dave Bonson, stock strategy right now? Look, Larry, I cannot get behind the Mad 7 Big Tech trade at 48 times earnings. <laughs> S&P right now, if you believe the most incredibly optimistic earnings growth of next year hitting 280, you're still at 21 times next year's earnings <laughs> for index investors. 
this is the time to be uh, rotating the value, the dividends, the more reasonably priced things. Consumer staples, utilities, they've had a big run the last couple months, but they're still pretty fairly valued. Energy, consumer staples, that's where you want to be. Get out of NVIDIA. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. You're both wonderful. I appreciate it very much. David Bonson, the Bonson Group, terrific stuff.